The meeting took place in 2017. They ignored our request for information once we found out about it. We sued in 2018. And to this day, we're still fighting for documents. Some of you may think, well, what does Judicial Watch do? I see this fitting guy on these videos, but what do we do? And Judicial Watch does a lot in terms of litigation. We're the number one litigator for open records in the country, if not the world. And so we have uh, filed hundreds of Freedom of Information Act lawsuits, uh, many of which have uh, focused on some of the worst government corruption in American history, uh, which is specifically the targeting of President Trump uh, the spying and targeting of not only Trump, but Trump world generally, and abusing power to go after uh, him. Uh, one of these um, lawsuits I talked about last week was about uh, the government collusion with big media to target Trump world. Paul Manafort in 2017, he was, um, I guess at that time, the former campaign chair of uh, President Trump, and the Justice Department was uh, trying to create charges against him. And they met with, the, with reporters for the Associated Press who shared with the Justice Department and FBI at this meeting a, um, the passcode for Manafort's storage locker. I mean, so you had the AP acting as like an informant um, against a Trump associate. And when you look at the records that we were able to obtain about this meeting, uh, you'll see that... Um, that the AP was very interested in getting Manafort prosecuted. And the Justice Department was feeding him little tidbits of information suggesting that was in the offing. So it was wildly abusive, and it shows the corruption not only of the deep state, uh, but their media collaborators. Uh, so that was an important lawsuit as it was. The meeting took place in 2017. They ignored our request for information once we found out about it. We sued in 2018, and to this day, we're still fighting for documents. Why? Because the government took the position that a then U.S. attorney or then assistant U.S. attorney, even though he intended the meeting at issue, they didn't need to search his emails. And we had to fight for, I guess, almost a year with them about that. And they refused to look at his emails until a federal court overseeing the case ruled that not only did they have to search his emails, but they should have searched his emails when we first asked. And then since then, we've learned that they've got this retention policy at the Justice Department, and the Justice Department has various components in it. Think of like the criminal division or civil rights division, but there's another division called the Executive Office of U.S. Attorney's Offices, which is the administrative division or the, you know, that's kind of the, the general office for all the U.S. attorney's offices. And um, it turns out that because they've got this new retention policy for three years, meaning they can delete certain emails after three years, emails responsive potentially to our request may have been deleted. But if they had searched it, this, uh, the records at the time we had asked, that wouldn't have been an issue. So that's what, we, that's what our court hearing was about this week. And the court wants um, um, basically to move the case along and figure out what to do and hear arguments from us about what to do and arguments from the Justice Department about what to do. But I think even broader than the issue of them <laughs> playing games by not looking for these records and then waiting too long and then, oops, they may have been deleted, uh, there's this bigger issue of the Justice Department, through its executive office of U.S. attorneys, confirmed to a federal court they're deleting countless emails about issues that would be important to the American people under FOIA and other records laws. What, what, what's going on? Now, they say there are certain only categories of emails that if, they were, if it was a, from a top official, they're not necessarily deleted. If they're from the case file, they're not necessarily deleted. There's a litigation hold. They're not necessarily deleted. But, of course, we asked for them under FOIA, and they were deleted. And, of course, even under those kind of categories, there are lots of other emails that could be deleted that many people would be interested in. Now, I want you to imagine that if a private entity 
uh, the Justice Department came at them and said, we want to search for, you. we want these records. And the private entity says, well, we're not going to search until we get a court order. And they get the court order. And turns out the entity had destroyed records in the meantime. What would the Justice Department do? They'd haul them in front of the court and try to get them in jail, right? But the Justice Department, this is, this is seemingly, uh, again, like Hillary's emails all over again, all these other email scandals where they have records that they know are responsive, they hide them from Judicial Watch, they hide them from the American people, they play games with the courts, and it turns out they get deleted, they get bleached, they get so-called uh, um, you know, cleaned from the servers, and the American people are treated like chumps. And um, we hope that the court here acts um, aggressively in, in light of this, in my view, this contempt of court and this contempt of the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, but the headline here is, there is this big anti-Trump collusion scandal that they hid records uh, from us for years over, and it turns out they ended up deleting some of them, potentially, that were responsive despite court rulings suggesting they should have been searched. Unbelievable. And who knows what other emails are being deleted about other cases and issues. I hope Congress, I might, I might have to tell Congress about this, right? And let them know that they better let, let the Justice Department know, don't st stop deleting any emails. Because this is just one agency. I don't know what the criminal division does. I don't know what the FBI's retention policy is. But this is a huge loophole the government has created for itself. Uh, to delete information the American people arguably have a right to. And of course, it's been uncovered, not by Congress, not by the media, but by Judicial Watch's heavy lifting in federal court. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.